Alright, welcome back. Let's see what Francisca has to say. You prayed yourself and acquired the piggy bank before the plane hit the turbulence. Then you waited for the victim lounge where you beat him to death. Then why you were in the elevator with the victim's body stuffed into the suitcase. The plane hit that patch of turbulence and out flew the body from in the suitcase. With no way out, you easily put the suitcase back where you had taken it from. Tended to be the discoverer of the body. Not a bad bit of logic or something you thought of on the fly. Just what are you insinuating? But I'll show you exactly how flawed your logic is. And how strong of a face you put on, not even you can hide your fears from me. I suppose the flaws in your logic won't fall sloop. Sloop? Fl sloop? Floop? S whatever, I can't. Words? Whatever, who cares? Um. No, actually, I think it's this first bit. Because this piggy bank was after the turbulence. Objection! Bam. The fact that you took this piece of evidence into account in your testimony is to be commended. Your legal prowess is something something to be feared. Evidence and logic. Since the tools that those who stand in the court must learn to master. What if there is a fake piece of evidence thrown into the mix? A fake? This iFly piggy bank is such a fake. It's not the real word in weapon. What? Tell me when the bank was taken from the shop is important. It was taken after the turbulence has occurred. What, did, what about the blood on the bank? What do you make of that? I assume it was added after the murder. And could have fabricated this weapon. So looking at it this way, he could have basically did three things after the turbulence. Direction the elevator. The killer brought the suitcase to the shop and left it there. Then the killer proceeded to pick up the bank off the floor. Took it to fabricate a fake murder weapon by hitting the victim on the head. Finding the victim's wallet was putting in my purse and inch, in my pocket to be precise. Everything was done that would be framed for the murder of Mr. Akabee Hicks. You there! Yes, ma'am. I don't speak big when anything else was remaining murder up and found. We didn't find anything in this lounge or the shop that could be used as one, ma'am. Most of the items that could be used were broken during the turbulence. The other items are just negative from any trace of blood. I see. Well, my as worth appears your stall tactics read an end. But it's possible it's hidden somewhere, sir. Eek. The criminal had wanted to hide the weapon in a safer place. I think the weapon would have been hidden in the same place as the bloody cloth. Exactly what I was thinking. Because the cloth is hidden in that suitcase, similar to me that the killer had not prepared a more secure place to hide the evidence. Which means the real murder weapon is either still in the murderer's person, or still at the real crime scene. There's one more possibility. And that would be that the piggy bank is, in fact, the real murder weapon. But didn't we just. Not to be finished, the killer took out some of the bank from the display before the turbulence. We were opening the lock on the display case door. It was at that time when the glass plane and the door was broken. They had the perfectly reasonable line of reasoning, wouldn't you? No, let's see. That means the killer had also had the key to the display case. Which is uh, the person you're talking about. Not so fast, I'm not finished. The person else I'm talking about also committed another sin. He tricked the captain. He granted you permission to induct an investigation. Yes, it is a sin of lying. Speaking of which, I recall you also wanted to speak with her. Yes. Very well, permission granted. But only if I can sit on your interrogation. We understand each other? I don't know I'm interrogating her. But you're welcome to accompany me if you wish. This city is in the fight attendance room. Let it move. Okay, are you gonna follow too? No? Alright. Hello. Oh, this is a... Is that poster on the wall you? Are you, like... Did you model for that poster over there? So you're the one who poked around inside the plane... Inside this plane without the captain's permission. Deviating from the flight attendant is very unbecoming, you know. What are you hoping to accomplish by doing that? I... I... Mr. Nero. Ah, Mr. Edgeworth, you're here too? You please help us and shed some light on why you did what you did. Uh, Alright. The sad music is playing. 
Hello. Oh, you look really... not okay. Captain Suspicion. Why do you like seeing the Captain Suspicion like that? Because I didn't think I would be able to get his permission. What do you mean? The Captain... He only has ears for Cammy. So I with the Captain a little earlier myself. He definitely seems to be rather taken with me it's Mealy. Yes, and on top of that... I mistakenly accused Mr. Edgeworth of being the killer. I wanted to make amends. In that case, please allow me to thank you for what you did. Thanks to you, I was able to clear myself of all charges. <laughs> really? Able to prove your innocence? Oh, thank goodness. Mr. Tenere, is it? There's one more thing I'd like to ask you. You were in the in-flight shop just for the turbulence, weren't you? Please answer honestly. Yes, I was. And why were you there? Well, I... Hmm? Well, that's an annotation. Francisco seems to have struck a nerve. Uh, Miss Nero, um... Please? All I did was get a check up on the shop, like I always do. You're saying it was for work, then? Yes, I'm in charge of the shop, so I keep, keep an eye on it. I don't have any reason to go otherwise. But to visit the shop, you pay a visit to this room, correct? Yes, I came back to freshen up and readjust my makeup. I'm sorry, there isn't much else to tell. Hmm, Snurge seems to have no other reason to go with the shop. That's all there is to it? I should ask her about that thing. What thing do you mean, Edgeworth? Off the top of my head, I don't know. That's a wallet. Piggy bank? I'm sorry, I don't know how to answer you. Oh, she doesn't know. Uh... The phone? No. In-flight movies. No. The suitcase? No, why would it... The suitcase? Can you please take a look at this... Uh, this for me, Mr. Nero. Oh, that suitcase. Yes, about this suitcase. You're the one who designed it, correct? I think I figured something else about it. The suitcase is the reason you went to the shop, isn't it? There's nothing you won't find out eventually, is there? Maybe just tell me more about this suitcase. Yes, um, I... well, I... I was interested in seeing how the suitcase I had designed were selling. I know that as a service professional, it's not, I'm not supposed to care. But I really wanted to know. I was glad to see that it was the last one there. That? That doesn't. The last one there. Please tell me about that. So you're saying, Mr. Nero, that the suitcase in question was the last one? Yes, they're just so popular, they're practically flying off the shelves. That's not exactly the impression I got. The one in the shop is definitely, most definitely the last one. But we're looking at that suitcase. Really? I guess we sold all of them. Thank you very much for taking the last one. I didn't say anything about buying it. Then say go buy it. I, I'm sorry I can't. It's ugly. It's awful. But, but why? I think I'll agree with your complexity, Mr. Edgeworth. It really suits you. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Yellow and green and pink and... The only thing that suits is the red handles. That's it. No. I guarantee the person needs a service professional. Um, well, that is... How should I put this? It's hideous. What? Hmm, maybe that's a bit too direct. Yeah, a little bit. Moving on. I'm sure the suitcase really isn't the design, it's the number of them remaining. R remaining? There were two suitcases in the inflight shop when I investigated it. T two? But that's impossible. I'm sure there's only one. Looks like your story has generated quite the contradiction. Left the shop. Impressive there's only one suitcase left. Um, I mean, honestly, it seems a little simple. When, before the turbulence, the one suitcase was gone already. Because the killer had taken it to kill the 
to use it for some reason, I guess, to kill the guy or something like that. So... That's just more proof that it left. Hmm? By the way, Mr. Nero. What's one of those suitcases doing here? Um, that's... I thought you said there was only one left. That one is, um... It's mine. I've used it for a very long time now. Used it for a long time? I think not. Mr. Nero, I appreciate you wouldn't lie to me. Excuse me. I don't know if you even one second that you've used this for a long time. It proves this hasn't been used because there's still a tag on it. Take that! Tell me, Mr. Nero, is also your habit to keep the price tag for seen on your suitcase? Ah! What is the meaning of this? Why do you lie about a suitcase? Despite having faith in her design sense, the sales never made her cry at bitter tears. The truth is becoming increasingly clear to me. Mr. Nero, I think I understand. I know what you are trying to hide. When the suitcase was originally in... the shop, I think the price tag is still on the suitcase. This one really assumed it was on the, on the floor for sale in the shop. The person who brought it back was you because you wanted to, to seem like they were selling. It was you, it wasn't Mr. Nero. I hate to say this, but the suitcase that you designed hasn't sold very well, has it? It was all a poor that I you poured your heart into, into was selling. We were deeply hurt. That's why you wanted to make it look like you were selling by buying it yourself. Isn't that right? The reason you went to the shop and came back here was... I'm sorry. All I really have is my job. I was overjoyed when my design was chosen. I thought that maybe, maybe I'd accomplished something. But the suitcases didn't sell. It's because of the design, isn't it? Because it's, as you put it, his ears. I can't say they chose a great place in which to sell them either. We weren't selling a single one and they were just sitting there collecting dust. I felt so bad seeing them there day in, day out. So I decided to buy one for every flight I worked. You buy one every single time you work a flight? I see, sort of keep your resolution. You went and bought one today as well. Yes, and here's my receipt for that purchase. Hmm. This receipt is clearly timestamped. 5.40 a.m. It's true that there's still a bunch of them left unsold. I'm planning to scrap the remaining ones at the end of this flight. Mr. Nair, where are these other suitcases? They'll still be down in the cargo hold. The suitcase the killer used could very well have come from the cargo hold. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, you don't think the killer used one of my suitcases to... Yes, I do. The killer used one of your beloved suitcases to move the victim's body. Ah, how could they? Suitcases are meant to be faithful partners to our passengers on their trips. All I wish for them to be. Senor, is anywhere to get to the cargo other than the elevator? The other way is just through that door there. What about security? That door has no special lock installed because... Just enter this room. He has a special key card that only crew members have access to. Means the culprit is someone who can enter this room. And then the passenger are leaving only crew members of additional suspects. I can't believe it. Yes, Francesca? Going on these wild goose chases, you're a disgrace to the Von Karma name. What do you mean by that? Two keys came from the cargo hold. Back alone tells me the whole story. Yes, that's why I said the culprit must be a crew member who used their key card. This is Miles Edgeworth. You're posing that the killer rolled the elevator from the cargo hold, correct? Yes, that's the only realistic possibility. That other attendant, Miss Mealy. I asked her earlier and she had this to say. Miss Miss Francis got information out of Miss Mealy. We're going to make the elevator go down to the cargo hold. A different key card is required. A different one? Yes, and the only person who holds that particular card is you, Miss Rhonda Tenero. And only you. Ah! What? Is this true, Mr. Nero? Yes, I keep the key card in my locker at all times. Can you please show us the card right now? Y yes hold on. Ah! I, I don't believe it. What's wrong? The key card, it's, it's gone. Haha, <laughs> very clever. Pretend that your card was stolen when in fact you're just trying to hide it from us. You really thought this through. Well, wait, it's not like that. 
You can tell us all about it when it's like done at the station. Officer, arrest this woman. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Redsworth. Hmm. I feel like that was a bit preemptive, but very well. What's wrong? There's disbelief written on written over your face. Francesca, I know that you were lead investigator in this case. However, hold it! Don't even think about wasting any more of my time. You know the rules as well as I do. Everyone speaks louder than words. Even this isn't a courtroom, that basic tenet still applies. I'm going to investigate the cargo hold now. What will you do, Miles Edgeworth? I tend to do likewise. To be continued, we didn't even do that much. Okay, we did. She got arrested, so that's kind of important. But still, we didn't do a ton. But, eh. Very well, I guess. I do kind of feel like Francis had jumped the gun a bit just because the card wasn't there. Like, oh, it was you, obviously, because you have the card. Or you, you're you supposed to have the card and it's not here, so it's you. Like, I mean, so he stole the card? Like, why would she not give us the card? You know? I don't know. Anyway, so we're under time, usual. Usual. We're under the usual time, but since, you know, there's not that much time to go anyway, I think we'll end it off here. So, till next time.